Hello all, it is of course me, Trollface the Man, and in today's video I will be consuming a spoonful of citric acid because why not? Let me explain. Long story short, I was on the How to Make Everything Discord channel, and we were all kind of talking with Andy about how to electroplate copper onto aluminum. And one of the things I was mentioning during the electroplating process is adding a weak acid like citric acid might not be a bad idea to remove oxide layers on top of metals and help the electroplating layer uh, stick better. And during that, I also sent a image of my eight pounds of citric acid. You know, I have it laying around because reasons. And apparently it's leaking. Perfect. One of the other users on the Discord channel uh, replying to that saying, you know what? You should eat a spoonful of that for YouTube because it'd probably go viral. And I thought, ha ha ha, probably would. But I wouldn't do it just for that reason. The more I thought about it, the more I consider, how could a video like that be done and actually be interesting? I bounced around the idea a bit, and this is what I came up with. Now, I do realize that there's other videos of people consuming a spoonful of citric acid on YouTube already, but you know what I was thinking is, how hard would it be for me to take something like, I don't know, sugar, add it to a container, say it's citric acid, take a spoonful of it, and act like it's the sourest thing I've ever had in my life. <clears throat> the thing is, is it wouldn't be hard. It's very sweet. And even if you start with a supposedly new unopened container of citric acid, it wouldn't be hard to hide a clever swap either during a jump cut a pan, out of shot, or even a sleight of hand. Now, longtime viewers of my channel would know that I wouldn't resort to such trickery, and that if I say I'm going to do something, I am going to do it, because I have a reputation to uphold. Even still, I'm going to do my best to prove that such trickery does not take place for all the skeptics out there. One way I'm going to do this is by uh, the point between concluding testing and actually tasting, I will be recording continually. And if I need to make any type of jump cuts or anything like that, I will link a video in the description that will have the full uncut version. So that way you can see that I didn't swap anything between those two points. But also, we're just going to run a few tests to prove that this is, in fact, a comedically uh, sized bag of citric acid. One of the ways I'm going to do this is by using the citric acid to decompose sodium bicarbonate, which is also known as sodium hydrogen carbonate uh, and simple baking soda. And what we're going to decompose it into is trisodium citrate, water, and of course CO2. Now to do this, I'm going to make an aqueous solution of uh, sodium bicarbonate, or in other words, dissolve it in water. So, I got some water here. Add it in here. Take the sodium bicarbonate. Add that in there. and just mix it up. Now, if this really is an acid, as I say it is, when I take this citric acid and I add it into here, you should see lots and lots of fizzing as the uh, CO2 gas is generated. That looks like an acid to me. Same thing happens if you add lemon juice or vinegar. So if what we actually have generated is CO2, 
uh, it's heavier than air, so it should actually be filling up this container and be trapped in it almost like a liquid, which means that we should be able to pour it out like a liquid. So if I take this candle here, we can do a cool demonstration. So if I light up this candle, uh, it's burning, it's consuming oxygen. And if I take this CO2, I should theoretically be able to pour the CO2 out of this container like a liquid onto this candle, which will displace the oxygen and extinguish the flame. So I got my other camera up here that we should be able to see with, and I'm just gonna pour out the CO2 right on top of this candle like so. And there we go. So CO2 gas, and it successfully put out the candle no problem. That was an expected result. All right, well, that was fine and dandy, but uh, there's a more definitive way I can prove that what I have here is actually a acid, which is to use pH testing strips. So I have some distilled water here. I'm gonna pour it in here, and uh, the distilled water should be neutral, should be seven. And if I take this pH strip, I can get it out. I'm just gonna tear off two of them at once now because I'm gonna need two of them. If I take this pH strip and I dip it in here, see where you guys can see. Yeah, that looks to be just about a seven. Which is what we expect. So, now if I take some of this citric acid, scoop it up, and I put it into this water, and I mix it around a little bit. That's sour. And I take this same pH strip, or, well, not the same one, it's pH strip from the same kit, and I dip it in here. Oh yes, we can definitely see that that is, it's looking about like a two, which would make sense because citric acid should be about a 2.2 on the uh, pH scale. So now that we got that out of the way, we can actually move on to consuming the spoonful of citric acid now. This will be about the approximate citric acid that we found in about two to three regular sized lemons. The citric acid is extremely harmful to the enamel of my teeth though, uh, when consumed like this. I do not recommend trying this at home, by the way. So as a precaution, I will have a cup of water here that I have mixed with sodium bicarbonate. Like so. That I'll use to swish and spit after swallowing the citric acid. This will help deacidify my mouth and protect my teeth. I will not be swallowing any of this water, otherwise it'll likely cause a lot of unpleasant gas as more CO2 would be generated inside of my stomach. In secondary precaution, I will be consuming a few antacid tablets um, afterwards. Uh, this will help mellow up my stomach's pH. They are primarily calcium carbonate, cornstarch, dextrose, and or sucrose. Uh, I actually have a few tablets here that have been crushed up. So let's actually add these calcium carbonate tablets to the citric acid water and mix it around and see what it does to the pH. So unlike the sodium bicarbonate, there's not really any foaming or fizzing, which is probably good because otherwise you get a lot of gas. One thing is, is that it is very hard to dissolve the basically anything into the solution because once again, these are calcium carbonate, which is like chalk, essentially, when you're not getting plaster-based chalks. But, uh, let's say that's good. I'm now gonna take a pH strip once again, and I'm gonna dip it 
inside of this uh, now quite nasty looking stuff. And let's see what the pH is. I would say that that is, sorry, I'm having a problem coordinating my camera here, right, right there. So that looks to be about a four now. Maybe a three, but it definitely looks probably like more than four. So we have raised the pH by two levels, which means that, yeah, that's definitely a difference. That's quite a difference. All right, here's the moment of truth. I'm just gonna readjust my camera. And I wouldn't wanna cheat you guys, so obviously I need to take quite a healthy spoonful here. A full tablespoon, not a teaspoon. And let's do this. That's sour. Ooh. That is quite sour. Whoa, I'm missing my voice. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's just a bunch of foam. <laughs> so there you go. Apparently, if you consume citric acid, a spoonful of that once, you lose your voice and it tastes very sour. And like as I said, I'm gonna take a few antacid tablets, probably drink some water. Still full. If I was smart, I actually would have had some water nearby to uh, to drink. Pass the tablets and uh, well, know something. So, needless to say, I strongly do not suggest trying this at home. It's probably a very bad idea. Could potentially lead to many problems, especially if you were to somehow aspirate that acid into your lungs. That would be no bueno. This is kind of a stupid thing. I really shouldn't have done it, but you know, stupid, stupid's kind of something I do. It just is. Ooh, excuse me. So yeah, thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoy this video, and if you understand how horrible it is to consume a spoonful of citric acid like that, if you would consider giving me a like, I would appreciate it. If you would subscribe, I would also appreciate that for more dumb stuff, but hopefully done smartly. Once again, sodium bicarbonate water and antacids were a good precaution. And uh, don't try this yourself, please. Literally do not try this yourself because, once again, it can be very dangerous and it can lead to quite a bit of harm uh, just in general. And I can still kind of feel my teeth feeling funny from the, the strong acid on it, but I should be fine. Thank you guys and bye.